big part of blowing up as an artist is creating a narrative that builds your fan base. But what happens when the media starts to attack you with a narrative that you don't want to stick? Nine times out of 10, if you're on the internet long enough, people are gonna put some stuff out there that you don't want. And sometimes it's gonna start to catch fire. A rapper has recently gotten a bad rap from a popular media platform. So we're gonna break down some of the ways that you can flip a negative situation into a positive using him as a case study. Check this out. All right, for those of y'all who do not know, a rapper by the name of Rich Amiri was one of the XXL freshmen that got chosen for the cover. And then there was a whole fiasco where they say they were doing freshman freestyles. You know, the big part of the media run where they do those freestyles. And he walked out on them. That's the news, right? We don't know. We cannot confirm or deny. But it's important y'all know the context of this because we're going to talk about how you can flip this situation. To go into a little bit more detail, their editor-in-chief, Vanessa Satin, wrote, One freshman got so shook over the cipher that he ditched the shoot literally five minutes before it was going to be filmed. He pretended to go to his car for clothing, hopped in, and got out of there. <laughs> he and his team then refused to answer our or their publicist calls it would have been nice for them to return one call so this is the situation all right so you have a popular media outlet that feels a type of way mm -hmm. they say you you've walked out they put out the narrative first all right yep. you didn't get ahead of it because we didn't know about this until you got ahead of it yep. sometimes a big part of this is to get ahead of it you know something's gonna come off come out for example uh kevin hart got che caught cheating on his wife all right, there was like a video of it. I don't know if you remember this. Yeah, I remember. But then <laughs> there was um, apparently a woman who was trying to blackmail him and put out the video. Kevin came out and talked about this whole thing before any of that news came out. Because yep. he didn't want, you know, somebody else to be able to, one, profit. Because, you know, media outlets will pay for stuff like that, information mm -hmm. like that. Yep. And also he wanted to control the narrative as much as possible first. Small example, extreme example, but it's... It's just a, a good way of showing the clarity of how you can use these tactics and how they apply across different situations. So he could have came out and said, yo, double XL did me dirty or they did something wild. I don't know, made some kind of claim himself. It could have been true, could have been not. Uh, and then spoke, said that as a reason that he had to go. Or he could have said like, man, I had to go to a family emergency. You know, whatever it was, he could have made that up. That's getting ahead of it is a strategy. He didn't get ahead of it. So what? where does he go from here? Man, well, I mean, I, I want to speak real quick on the, the getting ahead of it because I do think there was another artist who did a, a good example of that. Uh, Cash Cobain, who was a, another artist that's in the freshman list, he came out on like a radio interview and basically was like, I apologize for this shitty freestyle. Y'all going to hear from me in a, in a couple days, <laughs> a couple weeks. And, hey. you know, and it, it's yeah. like I, it was a, a good example of it because he was able to make light of it. I'm sure there's gonna be some people who are gonna hear it and defend it, be like, hey, bro, it's actually not that bad. Like, don't beat yourself up. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's gonna, do that, yep. yeah, it's gonna generate those kind of people. And so, I, yeah, I agree. I look at the Richard Mary situation where, you know, they're shooting these situations a couple of days to a couple of weeks before it comes out. It's like, bro, you know, you walked off, man. Like, why not go ahead and prepare for it? Like, right. now maybe he, to his point, maybe he assumed they wouldn't talk about it. Like, they yeah. wouldn't care enough to make it a thing. But you know, Double XL has been in a position where they've been getting disrespected by these young rappers for a long time. So they yeah. probably felt like this was like the yeah. straw that broke the camel's back, you know? So what, is, what does he go from here, man? Where does he go? I think, I think to your point, he needs to quickly come out and give his side of the story. Because at this point, the closest that we've got to him refuting any of the claims was he made a tweet that basically was like, I didn't walk out because I had to get clothes. I just felt like leaving. That was basically the gist of the tweet. So it's like, you've already confirmed that it was you. Cause if you remember, you know, so if you remember, well, I, even for those listening, cause I was talking to Sean about this off camera, Double XL never said his name. Fans just pieced together who it was True. based on information that they were kind of picking up from the rest of that that article piece. And then Richard Mary confirmed it once he came out and said like, I, I ain't leave because you no know, clothes shit. I live because I ain't feel like being here no more. So, at this stage, it's like you've already confirmed what they've said. You did walk out, you did leave, but you're, to your point, you're still not giving us an answer. Like, why did you do it? What about it? The situation made you want to do it? Because to your point, you could have a good reason. Like, you could very well say something that to his audience, especially, would sound like a good reason, right? Like, and the example I think of is um when when um. 
I believe it was ASAP Rocky that turned down the double XL. Well, he turned it down, so he didn't show up. But he turned it down and he said something along the lines of like, I feel like I, I'm I'm beyond, beyond this. this class right now, right? Yeah. And it's like, as fucked up as it might sound to the platform, the audience agreed with him at that point in time, right? We was like, hey, we feel you, bro. Fuck that shit. Dip out. Yeah. So Rich and Mir could very well have a good reason that could give him a better light in this situation. But even if the even if he doesn't have a good reason, I'm pretty sure his audience is looking for something to use to be able to defend him. He's like, a strong enough audience, man, where, one, you can defuse stuff by... He's like, yeah, you walked out, man. He's like, yep, I sure did. Yeah. It's like, that's it. Yeah. He's like, I sure did. And just leave it at that one. So now how do you attack me when I confirm and I own it? So own it, it takes something off of it. Um, but there are people are trying to use it like he's been, he was afraid to freestyle. Mm, yeah. I don't know if this is true or not, but that's probably not a narrative of him being afraid in any kind of way of anything, mm-hmm. just as a rapper, you typically don't want that type of narrative out there about you. Mm-hmm. So, okay, cool. Then he could say the real reason, if there is a real reason, he could just allude to, and this is what you do when you usually are in the wrong, but <laughs> you need to work on public appeal. You just say, y'all know why I walked out. Like We're not even <laughs> gonna talk about this, but y'all know exactly why the hell I walked out, bro. But you know, you just, oh, oh, you know why? Yeah, you, you leave it at that. <laughs> so and then his fans are like, "Oh man, they done did him dirty," but he being real by not even talking about it. All right, so you leave it general. That's a good you, point, actually. Yeah, that's exactly, a great point, actually. Exactly, yeah. but you come, <laughs> you come back out of it, and then you just give no, you don't give no more detail. You don't give no more detail. So you you play it like that, and and then you also had an option of leaning into it in terms of, um, like going on different outlets. Yep. Uh, to use this moment, people talking about you, shoot, go ahead. Like, flip that into interviews and build relationships with other media outlets since we already kind of talked about this beforehand. You're going to still need some media relationships. Mm-hmm. So parlay the <laughs> the downfall of one into others, hopefully. And, you know, maybe he doesn't want to do it immediately if he doesn't want the entire narrative around that. And, like, the freshman cover is not his thing right yeah like it would be one thing if it was like his album dropping so unless he has something that he's trying to promo he might still need to want like want to like lay off for a little bit but let's just say when you're doing your next rollout or yeah, if whatever that thing is that you're trying to draw attention to definitely be cognizant like all right i, I definitely want to give a whole bunch of media outlets some love and allow them to ask the question all right and get into it just so I can build on that other side since I done killed that bridge over there. Yeah, hundred percent, bro. Like he needs to go to like a like a RGN, a rap TV, or a say cheese, something, right? A, a, a to your point, a media platform that more closely relates to his core audience. And that needs to be I, I agree, like the first place he gives the full breakdown of it on. Yeah. I think that needs to happen soon. And then to your point too about the the freestyle image, I think he should go on like a freestyle tour. Right, he needs to go to the four shooters only. He needs to go to the on the radar. Like he needs to go do something where he is in a controlled environment where he can or cannot freestyle. He can present it however he wants to freestyle, and that would be the first narrative I would attack. Put his best foot forward. Yeah, exactly. Like, hey, bro, why would I be scared of freestyling? You just heard that shit. I just, I just put out. Because if it's good, the audience is immediately gonna dismiss that point. Oh yeah, nah, he smoked that shit, bro. There's no yeah, way. There's I no way. What y'all talking about? Yeah, ain't no way yeah. he dipped out because of that. Or just bro, just might have been tired or overworked yeah, or whatever. Right. He didn't feel it. Yeah, because a good part about that is, even this is the entertainment industry, right? Yeah. So, yeah, we know a lot of times these things are not freestyles, but if he presents something as a freestyle and everybody puts together the perfect packaging and makes sure it's dope. Just that will be the last thing image in people's head for sure. Yep, that's what Beyonce did. I don't know if you remember this, but Beyonce was performing for the Super Bowl, and then there was something about prior to that. I think it was like an art inauguration or something for maybe Obama or something like that, and people were saying Beyonce wasn't singing for real. The reality, I think she had some kind of backing track or something because it was super cold conditions. Mm-hmm. So that's just not good for your voice. Yeah. So people were just trying to make it seem like Beyonce can't sing without that yeah so okay, then she okay. went to the conference like where they like introduced or talked about the fact that she was gonna perform for the nfl at the super bowl and 
she sang her butt off. Like she sang probably like only a few notes in the middle of her speech. It was like some boss stuff. Like she was really just there to talk, but then she just sang. It was like, yeah, I did that. And then went back to it, right? Yeah. So it's just a moment of proof. It's like, I can do this if I want to. I just don't want to do this for you in his uh, scenario, which also puts him back in a position of, of power. Artists, managers, there is no way you should ever do a regular pre-save campaign again because Forever Fan has Forever Saves, where a fan could pre-save your music one time and then automatically pre-save every song you ever release after that. That's right. Forever. And on top of that, Forever Fan has email and texting all in one platform. This is built out for artists who don't have huge teams and don't want to get overwhelmed doing too many things in too many different places. So go to foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels. That's no labels with an S and put in the code no labels O2 to get access and try it out for only a dollar. Forever Fan is your go-to place for your marketing needs as an artist so you can stay organized, have your own infrastructure to make it a lot easier to go to the next level. Again, that's foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels and type in the code no labels 2 at checkout to get access for only a dollar. Now back to the episode. Before we like get into some of the final ones of things you can do, number one, you can lie. <laughs> or you can imply that they're lying, but never specify what they're lying about. Works well. Real, real. It, it works very well when you already have a fan base in particular, right? Because the fans, they want to lean on you. We saw we saw this in the Kendrick Drake battle, right? Yeah. The fans want to lean into yeah. whichever side they, you know what I mean? They so want something to defend. Yeah, they just, they just need you to, to buck up a little bit. So then they can ride with you. So one, imp- imply and create a gray area. <laughs> uh, really should be giving it an answer. <laughs> this, this advice, but this is this is the game, bro. This is the game. <laughs> Two, lean into the controversy because it is a good way to build some attention around you because now everybody is like, who is this, who is this, who is this? But I would want to do it in a way that it's packaged where you aren't spreading the narrative of, hey, this person is afraid on a whole bunch of outlets. You need to spread, hey, this the pe- people thought he was afraid, but you package it with the dope freestyle or something mm-hmm. like that. Yep. So and that's the thing that you're spreading really quickly. I got a campaign that we're leaning pretty heavily into a a, a lot of backlash right now and it's going going crazy. You got people in the comments saying, well, if you, I'm glad y'all get, I'm glad that there was a backlash because now I'm about to go download it. And it was like a whole bunch of people liking it. Mm-hmm. It works for discovery. So using those moments, I know a lot of times y'all think it's a distraction, but a lot of people are going to say, well, what is the issue with what is going on? All right. Or like this person isn't bad. So some people also be confused. Like why, why are they thinking he's chicken about freestyle and he can obviously freestyle or this yep. is a good song. I yep. like what I see. Yep. So you use that to get attention, any narrative to your favor. Um, and then like, after lean into it, three, make sure you build a bridge to other relationships because you also do have to be cognizant. And we say this because he's also, he's not the newest, but he's freshman class. So he's still newer. Yeah. And we know he has some, some backing with some teams, yep. but also as an artist, you also got to remember that those teams connections are not your connections. So it's nice to lead, you know, flip these moments yourself and build relationships with media outlets directly. You said go on a freestyle run. Yeah. Like a tour. So yeah. display, you know, uh, was create a spectacle around the thing that they were saying you were lying out yeah. or, sh- or proof show and prove that you can do the thing that they say yeah. that you couldn't do or yeah. you were afraid of doing. Yep. Is there anything else that we left out? With leaning into it, I do want to add on. I do think that he has a really, a really unique moment where he could create a movement around us if you wanted to. Because before we start rolling, I was talking about how he may have one of the better negative double XL situations because he's the first rapper to have a negative situation while double XL is probably at their lowest from a, a, a culture standpoint, right? Like a, a, a brand love ability right, standpoint. Right, 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 right. And so if you think about his core audience, honestly, he, th- th- there's a case to be made that he may be doing more of a favor for them than they are for him. Cause now I'm, I'm, I'm help. I'm the one that's helping get, the 14 year olds, the 15 year olds, the 16 year olds to to come pay attention. And so if you think about that demographic, they already feel weird about Yeet 
you know what I'm saying, turning it down last year. So that 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 I space, forgot, I forgot you. Some, down, yeah. so I'm saying, bro, that space is looking for a leader to be like, hey, bro, fuck these outlets, fuck these old school platforms. Like this is this does not represent what we now care about. And I think that we've seen some artists like teeter on that line. Every now and again, you'll have an artist come out and like say something about it. But no artist wants to like stand at the forefront and be like the martyr for that because they know that the backlash from the old heads and the, the, the hip hop pierce is gonna be ugly, but there's such a large culture of music that is removed from that. Oh, yeah. Like you will be okay. That's like, not your audience anyway for, for, <laughs> yeah. for real. So that is a good final point. It's really one of the things that should have been early on. First you, gotta, you have to analyze the standing and power of your enemy in that situation. Yeah, exactly. Right. If XSL was at the peak of XXL and we're just talking about media, um, pre-social media in general. It would have been bad for them. It would have been completely <laughs> different. Now there's just so many outlets. It's hard for one outlet in general, no matter how much legacy there is to just block you out or have that level of impact. So them being in a weaker position in that way, and then within your particular culture, they're in a w even weaker position, mm -hmm. all right? That's your chance to yeah just go hard on it and go all the way with it and say, yeah, we don't care about that anyway. Even if you did care, again, this is this is not, not the game we're playing. We're not talking about where you started or what your truth was prior to this event. Now that you are in this circumstance, what's gonna get you up out of it? So <laughs> it's like, hey, nah, man, I ain't, it's just like them dudes, man. I ain't care about your ugly ass, no way, bro. After you were just hollering at her for like two minutes, that's exactly what you, what, what you have to lean in and do. Try to build a nice little campaign, a little movement around it. I, f I forgot the context of other people in similar spaces like, um, dang, uh, Yeet, turning it down. So it is ripe for disruption within your particular community. And I think because of that, there's there's two ways that this can go. And this is a different conversation. But uh, either XL, XL is going to have to change that format a little bit or, you know, just figure out how to cater towards that. And either they'll do that first or there will be somebody who just all out lashes out and then takes away the relevance in that way in an even bigger way. Where they, where they, because they're teetering a space where an artist who does it right could make it seem corny to even be on the XXL in that category. So great point. So both of them are in some in some positions. Yeah, I agree, man. Like you know, the the reality of the case is, you know, Rich Amir, if you, you're hearing this, bro, you you have definitely burnt the bridge. More than likely, I would imagine. You think so? Hundred percent. I read in this article that said that uh, the manager called and apologized, but Double XL said they still haven't heard anything from him. So he he's standing on what it, and that's why I believe that, bro. Whatever happened that made him feel strongly enough to not only walk out, but then to then double down on not giving an apology, I'm like, you must have a you must have a good reason, right. bro. Like lean into it, bro. Right. Like I was gonna, we we gotta cut this episode because <laughs> it's gonna be a, a, a whole another conversation. But I will say. What's interesting <laughs> that there's a lot of artists that actually don't know that the manager calling to apologize. It's not the same as you yeah, exactly. to apologize. Yeah. Like they just feel like, oh, the manager's handling everything. Oh, the manager did it. It's not the same as you showing up and <clears throat> again, I don't want to go to a whole nother episode, but artists, y'all take a lot of your own power away and I get it. You have teams you want to work for you, uh, work for you and make your life easier. You might have anxiety about certain things or not know what to do in situations, but know that the power of you showing up Quite different. is way different. If that means, hey, hitting you hitting up an influencer versus your manager where, oh, there's a relationship there or they see you care or you showing up to the radio station or you showing support or in a situation where there's some tension and you apologizing versus your team doing certain stuff, there's a lot more weight in your own personal presence and you have to remember that. But, you know, I'll leave it at that because then that's a, a whole nother, whole nother episode. The media training video. Well, yeah, media training. <laughs> just just attach that into this entire, you know, thing. Let's call that a little media training and development. Other than that, this is yet another No Labels Necessary episode. Click on Brian Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we out. Peace. Appreciate you for watching. If you like content like this, you'll love seeing our music marketing strategies that we use as an agency to actually blow up artists to millions and even billions of streams that are available for free at nolabelsnecessary.com. And the cool part about it that's going to really make you love it is we don't have to be all entertaining and add all this fluff just to get some views that we do on YouTube. We get straight to the information.
there's play by play and courses that give you a breakdown of every step that you should do to get success. And you have the ability to have communication with us. We get on live talks, a lot of cool things for members and it's free just to hop in. So check it out right now at nolabelsnecessary.com.